Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I missed you guys. Um, and no, I did not forget about y'all. Some people were saying that in the comment section. No, I wasn't trying to be rude, but I wanted to take a step back to think about what I wanted to do. And I basically, not basically, but I had to get my business started. So, um, and it costs a lot of money. Uh, dispatch company really, if you're trying to go on a low end, it could cost them like $300 to $800 to start up. But I spent a lot of money. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I know I probably spent over 2000 because I bought one course and it cost $650, but I felt like it was kind of basic. Um, and I was like, I want, like, if I'm going to do it, I want to know everything. I already know how to dispatch because, um, my family had a company, Barbara Logistics. We had a box truck and a Sprinter van. two years ago um and I was ready to get out the truck I got fired I did plan on going back to um driving trucks but then I thought about it well my best friend I was talking to my best friend like I just found myself not wanting to get back in the truck like when I got fired I applied about 10 to 15 jobs immediately as soon as I got fired I wasn't even mad I got fired they said oh I'm sorry Cherish you're terminating I'm gonna have to terminate you because of what happened and I was just like okay like it wasn't no sadness it just was like okay time to get to work so i applied to 10 to 15 jobs um i applied so a lot i can't even remember all the jobs i applied to but my top three which i already knew about before i even got fired i knew i wanted to go to adu power was my first choice 10 rows was my second choice and ward was my third choice oh four four jobs well actually five jobs um <laughs> ecm was my fourth choice and it's this company called it's a smaller company it's called m m they were my fifth choice and if y'all know anything about the company, just put it in the comment section. I know I'm not going back there, but this maybe you can help somebody else out that's in the Northeast area or the Baltimore, Pennsylvania area, and they might be interested in them companies. But yeah, I, um, so AD Powell called me that same day and was like, oh, we don't have nothing in the Maryland area, but I'm going to keep your application on file. Tim Rose said, <laughs> Tim, Rose, Tim Rose did have something in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but I think it might have been 115 miles out and they only hop. I mean, 80 miles out, and they only um, hire 60 miles, so I couldn't do that. But they had something part-time in my area, and I'm like, I'm not doing nothing part-time. And then um, Ward, they said, come on. Um, Eminem never called me. And ECM called me for an interview, but I thought I'd call it back. Because it just was like, I applied to like 10 or 15 companies that day. And most of the companies called me, but I found myself not want to answer the phone or not want to talk on the phone. I just didn't want to do it no more. So then I talked to my best friend and she was like, I was telling her about dispatching, like, you think I should just start my dispatching company? And I was talking to my mother and they're like, yeah, you would be real good at it. Cause I already know what I'm doing anyway. Cause like I said, we had a Sprinter van and a box truck. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, like I already know what I was doing and I love to do it and I love helping people. So as a dispatcher, I've already got started. Um, I've already got started and pretty much to my surprise, it's overwhelming the amount of, not overwhelming, but I'm surprised since I just got started of all the people that have called me already. Um, but I, um, I enjoy doing it actually. I really do. Like, cause number one, I love, y'all know I love money. That's my passion. Number two, I love helping people. Anybody that's in my Patreon, y'all know I love helping people. Even if I can't get the answer that you need right then, y'all know I'm going to get it for you because anytime I feel like any, it's my duty. Anytime someone is paying their money to me, y'all are my number one priority. So nobody would have nothing to worry about. And I know how it feels to be on the road. Um, another thing, like I want to be like not friends, but I want to have a bond with my um, my drivers or whoever working me with me. I want to have a bond with them because that's the worst feeling. Like at my last job, I did not have a bond with my dispatcher. Like and it kind of sucked a little bit because I know how it does feel. Because um, a couple of years before that. Dion Bowman, I had a bond with him. I mean, we were the same color, so maybe that's why. But um, it's better to have a bond with your dispatcher than to, to just be somebody that you got to deal with. Well, I guess that's any like any rule. You don't want to, you want to, y'all want to have a bond with that person. Um. So anyway, yeah. Um. Another reason is I knew that I now want to put myself in a position again to get fired. I got fired from my last company. I still would have been driving trucks, like I said, but I would have been local. But I always knew that I wasn't going to drive trucks no, more, no longer than two to four years more. I was ready to get out. 
Um, but it was like I had to do what I had to do. Of course, I couldn't want to make the buses, but I just felt like a truck driver, especially since I had social media based uh, on truck driving, it was like I kind of was stuck in a circle. Like I had to keep on doing this, even though I do have a love for buses. Buses is actually my passion. I have did a lot in the transportation industry. I, we need to get back started to when I was about 19, 20, doing Grubhub, Instacart, DoorDash. Then I went on to do paratransit. Then I did, um, a, hold on, then I did paratransit. Then, I, of course, I went to do motor coach buses or whatever, which, you know, that's like a Greyhound. Then I actually, for a little bit, a lot of people don't know this, I actually did Metro for a little bit. It's called DC Metro. Well, I forgot what it's called. WMTA or something. WMTA, like, circulator. It's the circulator, which is a part of the Metro, but it's kind of like the free bus. Um, and then of course I did box trucks, sprinter vans, semis, like anything you pretty much can think of, I pretty much did it. Like, so that's how I know I do like the transportation industry. I just didn't like driving a truck as a company driver. And really, I don't want to be employed by nobody. Like I want to do, I don't want to put my livelihood in no one's hands again. Oh, Uber, Lyft. I don't want to put my I don't want to put my livelihood in nobody's hands. Not, nobody's gonna say they gonna fire me or hire me. No, I rather just start my own stuff. But like I said, I like I, I like to invest in myself, and I know I'm gonna do good in this position. I already am, but um, I know I'm gonna do good in this position because I am a learner. Like I will research the hell out of something. Like I said, I took I well I didn't even tell y'all this, but I took two courses. The first course was $650, which I knew that was a bit expensive. I thought a course was like $300, but apparently not. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the course was like $650, but it was like, I still felt like I had questions. After that, I still felt like I had questions. But then, so then I took another course that was like $500. And um, I was like, I felt better, but I still had like two questions. But I know, like, any time you go to a school or anything like that, of course, they only teaching you the basics. You're still going to have questions. But, um, yeah. Still going to have questions. But, yeah. Um, I just felt like I had, I answered questions. Now, of course, I feel confident. I know what I'm doing. I know what everything. And I know I'm going to do, like I said, I'm already doing good. I know I'll be a beast at it. And that's how I know. I do, know, I do have a strong feeling that my company is going to be big. Like I said, I'm already getting a lot of calls. And I just started. So I can just imagine, and it's not like something I'm just doing. Like, it's not like something I'm trying out. I invested a lot of money in this. This is what I'm doing. Like, I might retire doing this. I probably will. But now that I am doing this, I always had a negative viewpoint of owner operators in the semi level because, um, like I said, we had a box truck. So we own, like, own authority, everything. And I was okay, but I always had a negative viewpoint of the owner operator on a semi level because of how people talk about it. Like, oh, it, it's like the owner operator, the owner operators today, they don't make it seem like, um, you know, owning a semi truck is worth it. So I always thought negative, like, oh, like, even when people say that you need to get your own truck, which that's irrelevant anyway. You can't tell somebody what they need to get. They gonna get it when they're ready or if they want to get it. And I didn't want to get it because of how owner owner operators talk about um trucks but now that i'm dispatching i actually think about it like i think like once i get my business taken off and find somebody to run my dispatching business i might get me a truck like a day cab or something with a reefer because i think that's what i'm going to be specializing in i'm working with i'm working with dry vans and flatbeds and reefers but i want reefer to be so of course i still i'm still be taking dry vans and flatbed and giving them my all but i really want to specialize in reefers um, but this fashion is not easy. <laughs> it's not like it's a 24 seven thing. It's not like, oh, okay, I'm on a date. I'm not going to answer my phone. I'm sleepy. I'm not going to respond to these people till tomorrow morning. No, these drivers out here, they alone. Sometimes people not answering the phone and you need to be that contact. Even if you can't answer the phone, it will still mean something that you at least got up. Y'all are attending to your drivers. Just think about it. And that's how I know I'm going to be, be, be a B-setter because I, I wasn't a, you know, but I know how it feels to be a driver. Your dispatcher not answer the phone. Your dispatcher don't give a damn about you. Like, I'm a very caring person, so I know I'm going to be a B-setter and I'm very observant. So I'm going to know what my drivers need, what they don't need, what they like, what they don't like. And I tell everybody that that's trying to work with me or that does work with me, 
it's up to you. If you don't want to go to New York City, you don't go to New York City. If you don't want to dig here over 100 miles, don't dig here over 100 miles. I'm not here to force nobody to do nothing. Because at the end of the day, my main purpose is to make the driver happy and to make the broker happy. And you know the broker works directly with the shipper or whatever. So they come hand in hand. So you got to make the broker, the shipper, and the driver happy. They are all equal. You got to make these people happy. But I know the job is already been rewarding because, like I said, I love to help people. And, yeah, like, I'm going to be a beast at it. I know what these drivers want to make. I know what they don't. I know what their bottom line is. I know what they don't want to make under. And I'm going to make it happen. And I'm going to be very professional in this business because, like I said, this not. I don't want this just to be, like, a small thing. I want to um, have a lot of couriers. Like, my goal is to have, like, at least 40 couriers. Like... <laughs> Of course, I'm not going to dispatch them. The most I would dispatch is like six of them. But I'm going to be hiring people already here. People on my mind that I will hire. You know what I mean? So this is not going to just be like no one and done thing. And of course, I'm going to help people. I see people ask me already, like help them, help them. Of course, it's going to be videos about it. But of course, I'm working with y'all more in depth. It's, I get more seasoned and stuff like that. Um. So any questions y'all got about it, yeah, y'all can write in the comment section and stuff like that. But yeah, I spent a lot of money. Like over two thousand because I had to buy my suit. It still hasn't got here yet. I bought a desk. I bought a chair. I bought two courses that was like eleven alone. Um, I bought a computer because I didn't have a computer. I have a, a iPad, which I could have kept my iPad, but I wanted to like if I'm gonna do this, I'm the type of person like if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Like I'm gonna be very professional with it. I'm gonna do it. Um, what else did I have to buy? I bought a lamp. I bought a map. Um, like to go on the wall. Um, I bought a plant. I bought a lot of stuff. I ain't gonna lie to you. You gotta um, buy the low board. Um, if you're gonna work off the low board, which you kind of got to in the beginning, until you get your couriers and you got direct brokers and shippers that you're actually gonna be working with. Um, you gotta get that knowledge. There's a lot of courses going around. You just gotta figure out which one is the best one. The second, they both, I feel like they both offer something, both of the courses I had, but I feel like I get more value from the first course that I bought out of her Facebook group. And the second course, the the value was in her course, but her face, her Facebook group is okay, but they don't have as much knowledge as the first group. The first group, everybody in there, they have a lot of knowledge and they know what they're doing. Um, let me see. Am I missing something? Ran across a lot of good friends, so anyway, I'm working with especially in the summer, I know I can make them and making them a lot of money. Like, I mean, be realistic, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, be realistic, but definitely know I can make somebody between if they willing to run and, you know, they professional, they're going to be on time. They're not going to be um, making me lose any relationship with these brokers and shippers. I can make somebody between 8 to 14 easily. Not box trucks, like <laughs> not box trucks or hot shots. Um, that's not really my specialty. I might work with them, I might not. Um, but one thing I know is anybody I want to work with, I want them to be taking their business as serious as I'm taking mine. Don't be late going to these shippers and receivers, don't be canceling those, and that's one thing. If you like canceling loads on me and stuff like that, and it's like you, it's not an emergency or something that happened with the truck, I'm not really, I'm not willing to work with you. Like, <laughs> like you didn't even tell me, you telling me to book loads and you know you're not going to do them. I'm not willing to work with you because I said this is my, this gonna be my career, so I'm not willing to let you mess up my name um, in the industry. Like, I only want to work with people that is about their business, about making money, and they got good business. And, of course, I'm going to treat my drivers like freaking gold because this is a word-of-mouth company. So, whoever I'm doing good by and making them good money, of course, they're going to tell their friends, oh, yeah, this dispatcher is making me a lot of money. That's just how it goes. Like, and that's why these, like, companies like Swift and Word and stuff, they really need to stop that. Of course, they know, like, anybody going to come work for them, but at the same time, Word of mouth is everything. So a lot of people don't work for y'all at the same time. Like CRST and all of that. A lot of people don't work for y'all because of word of mouth. And with it, like Western Express, I would never go there. I know people be like, oh, you can't tell me where, where to go. I'm not telling nobody where to go. I'm telling you what I would do. Somebody made a comment one time. Um, don't talk down on them companies. I ain't talking down on them. Like, 
I was talking to the guy from Swift. We was talking about Western Express, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, you know, some, they got to go somewhere. And he was saying, okay, just because they got to go somewhere, they don't mean they should be paying them pennies. It's shit biggest business, so I'm willing to have a relationship with anybody, especially if you're an owner-operator, ship or broker. I'm willing to have relationships. I'm not breaking no relationships. Like I said, the only thing that would make me, like, I ain't dealing with them is if you cancel those and messing up my name. I'm not trying to mess up your name. Don't mess up my name. And you shouldn't try to mess up your name either. But yeah, if you know any owner operators, you're owner operator looking for a dispatch, I promise. I got you. I will go to bed for you. I work on the highest paying loads. Definitely reach out to me. My number is in my flyer on my community section. I'll probably put it in the comment section. Also, company drivers, I will still be giving y'all tips. And like I said, if you're a company driver and you want to work with an owner operator, people be people do be asking me like they want me to find them a driver and that's a service that I'm providing. So if you're a company driver, drop your email. Send me an email at all things trucking logistics at gmail.com. Um, with your name and like what you trying to make, and I'll probably can hook you up with somebody. So let me know.